Hey -o, everybody, Haku here, a day late on my uh, review for Tensei Shita Slime Dot again episode. Are we on 15 already? No, yeah, we are. Because last time was the mid season premiere, not this week. So, yeah, we're on, we're on episode 15 already. So, damn, that time I was reincarnated as a slime, English working title, of course. So, uh, I love this one. I actually have a ton of notes because a ton happened, but I'm going to try to not make this review too oppressively long. Uh, just know that I really, really liked the episode, because we focused on kind of what I really, really like about the series, which is the, um, I don't know, the kind of building of the world. This entire show is about world building, like legitimately building up their little village into now a country. And in addition to that, as we're building that up, we're learning more about the world around them. So uh, it's a really interesting and unique way to tell a story, and I totally love it. Uh, so let's talk about it from uh, the start to the finish. Uh, that'll be the easiest way to go through, as usual. Uh, so starting at the beginning, we have their Conference of the Races. And again, I love this kind of stuff. I love various fantasy races and stuff, like uh, especially that they're monsters and not just boring-ass like human elf dwarf, but we have like goblins and orcs and all of that. It's really, really cool. I like that kind of stuff a lot. Uh, then we get the new opening, and I love it. There's some parts where I think people will like the first one more, and some parts where I think people will like this one more. Uh, I love both of them, kind of for different reasons. The first one had this nice, fast-paced song. It was really hype. The fight animation was really, really good. Um, for this opening, honestly, the fight animation's not as good. Um, I heard that it was pushed back because it wasn't even ready last week, but it was supposed to be up there last week. Um, but honestly, even though it's not as good, even though it's more stilted and stuff, I like that... A, this one's more slow and emotional, especially the bit at the beginning with the piano, I think it is. I think that was really, really good. But in addition to that, this one does a good job of showing all this, like, span of characters, and that's something that I like about it. Uh, this opening had more of them building the city up, which is more in line with what the story actually is. It had more about the side characters and their struggle and what they do, which again is more about what the show is about. So I like that. Even though it had less action, even though the action didn't look quite as good, I might prefer this opening in some ways because I think it fits the show more. But I don't know. And I do love the song. It's hard to decide between this song and the first one. Both are really, really good. Um, so uh, getting back into the story after the opening, uh, Rimuru says that he's not going to charge the orcs with any war crimes or anything uh, because they were, well, I mean, they were influenced by outside forces by the Majin or whatever. Um, but the reason they did what they did was because they were starving to death and he kind of took the sins upon himself from Geld. Um, so he says he wants to, or he being Rimuru, says he wants to create a nation of coexistence, which I do think is, um, again, really, really cool. It's what I want to see. All these fantasy races coming together and joining up and do a team. It's really, really cool. I love this kind of storytelling. Uh, so the idea is that the lizard men can provide things like water and fish. Goblins can provide space within the forest for them to live. Uh, the village that Rimuru has started up already has a bunch of craftsmen and such, so they, so they can provide uh, processed goods like clothing, armor, weapons, and things like that. Uh, the orcs can provide labor in exchange for, again, all their crimes being... Because um, that's kind of something they need. Uh, they all get food and stuff because food and stuff is plentiful here, uh, but also they need workers to finish building all the buildings and stuff for everyone to live, so the Yorks can just work in whatever job they get to uh, sort of provide for themselves now. So it gives the Yorks just a chance to live with everyone. Um, so that's great. And Trainee mentions that the Trents with her will provide food from the forest. So again, it's all a really good setup. Uh, for everyone involved, it's mutually beneficial, just like with the uh, Alliance we'll see later in the episode. So they call themselves the Jura Forest Alliance. Uh, Rimuru was expecting Trainee to lead, but kind of gets roped into leading himself. Uh, the orc leader then offers to die as an apology, but the Kijin have kind of moved on. They are like, we're living our new lives under Rimuru. 
uh, we don't really need um, revenge. And in addition, for not needing revenge, also, if you're working for Rimuru too, we'd be killing another one of our master servants. Um, so uh, they mentioned their new titles or whatever. Shion is sam samurai slash secretary. Um, Hakuro is the instructor. Soe is a spy. And then, uh, of course, Kurobe is a swordsmith. Then Princess, I believe, was the title that's kept by um, Shuna is her name, I think. Uh, but really, she's kind of a seamstress. Lots of S's here, lots of alliteration going on. Uh, and then finally, of course, Benimaru is the ge or is the general, so he's in charge of all the fighters of Rimuru's Jura Forest Alliance. So that's the reason Benimaru says, I definitely wouldn't kill you because why would I want one less fighter for us? So it was a nice heartfelt moment of being forgiven and stuff. We learned that this... Um, this orc leader is actually Geld's son. Uh, Rimuru then has listened to everything and decides to name him Geld in, or in order to carry on Geld's will. Um, so then he evolves into the orc king. He mentions taking days to name all 150,000 orcs, and he names the chieftain of the lizardmen Abiru. I get the feeling if he named all the orcs, he's got to name all the lizardmen too. They didn't specifically say it, but I really hope he named the lizardmen too, especially um, especially waifu lizard girl. Um, what's Gabiru's sister? Because um, she was cute. So uh, give her a name. Then uh, Gabiru, we learn, was charged with treason, but instead of being killed, he was punished with exile, and he was given the trident to keep. And then, my heart, when his lizard man bros were still there and they stuck with him, my heart was like so strong with the lizard man bros. Like, I've been cheering Gabiru with them every episode. It was so, so good. Um, so, yeah, lizard man bros, best characters in the series. Uh, we then cut away from Lapless reporting to Demon Lord Clayman, and this is interesting because we see in the opening Clayman with Lapless and two other people in masks. I didn't pay attention to if one of them was actually Gelmet. I don't think so, though. So, uh, again, really interesting that we're kind of setting up for them to be maybe not the next antagonist we run into because there was the monster and then there were the fairies after them. And it's kind of hard to tell, too, because we had, like, two groups of humans, I think, in the first opening that didn't even show up yet uh, properly in the uh, first half of the anime. So because of that, it's uh, kind of hard to judge that they will actually be showing up within this core, uh, given the events of the first core so and the first opening. So we'll see. But uh, it looks like they're going to be kind of big antagonists, maybe, for this next part of the story. Uh, then we have a three-month time skip as the houses have been built up a bit. Uh, they've also built a sewage system and roads for commerce. So uh, that's great. And with the roads for commerce, I guess, other than the capital city they're building, there's probably going to be other places like the Lizard Men's, home, Lizard Men's Home and all the other goblin villages that probably other creatures are moving into that... Uh, that are going to be able to be built up as side cities. So that's all really, really cool. Uh, then we see these knights start coming in like they're invading, and Dwargo is among them. Uh, we get a nice flashback to show what they're doing, and Dwargo believes that the Majin were working for Rimuru, so we had to go and check out what's going on with this grand assembly of monsters where there used to be a rampaging army at. Uh, so he wages his he wages answers to Rimuru on a sword fight. Rimuru gets the wind, of course, or gets the win, of course. Uh, so he explains everything and says, "Ah, you're a good enough guy." Dwargo knows Hakuro. I believe Hakuro is probably the one who taught him at a group, who taught him swordsmanship and such. Um, he then later on at this little dinner they're having asks Rimuru for an alliance to support each other. And the reason this is mutually beneficial is because Dwargo realizes you're a quickly growing nation in the forest of Jura. If eventually you grow large enough, you could attack me. But instead of that, if we're like enemies or if we're not friends even, uh, but instead of that going down, how about I and my people, we support you and help you the best we can. And in addition to that, we'll be friends and you won't destroy us when you get too large or try to attack us when you get too large. So it's basically offering support in exchange for peace. 
So uh, that's all good. They end up naming the um, the country the Jura Tempest Federation, and they named their city the capital city Rimuru. So all of that is nice. Then uh, we have the new ending. I think the new ending's okay. I think it's good, but I prefer the first one quite a bit. I don't know. I don't know how I feel about the new ending yet. I do think it's good. I just really prefer the first one. Um, so then, yeah. Thoughts as a whole, I thought it was a great episode. I thought that it had a ton of content, just a ton of stuff packed into the episode, a ton of information, and that's exactly what I love about the series. This building of things, this alliance making, character developing, I love all of that kind of stuff about the series. So I would actually give it a 9.5 Nations of Coexistence out of 10. Because while it wasn't like super hyper emotional or special among other episodes, it gave me a lot of content, and it gave me content that I personally like. Uh, so because of that, got to give it a high score. So 9.5 out of 10. I enjoyed it a ton, and I hope you did as well. Uh, like you, like if you did like the video, comment down there to tell me what you thought of this episode, what you thought of my thoughts and all of that. Subscribe for more. Tenseishi.slime.gen. Much more on the channel. Hopefully this won't be a day late again in the future. Um, so follow on Twitter if you want. Uh, and I'll try to keep you updated there and stuff for the channel or talk to you there. And if you want to link to our Discord server to talk to me or more of us there about this series or anything else, just ask me for a link and I'll give you one. So that's it. Thank you once again for watching and I'll see you all next time.